We have attendees rolling in. Hello, everyone. My name is Robert Stuckey, the Irrigation Association's Education Manager, and I'm pleased to welcome you to another Manufacturer Series webinar. Today's webinar titled, Work Smarter and Delight Your Customers with Service Titan, is sponsored by Service Titan. Managing a service team is not easy, but Service Titan is here to change that, as they provide a highly customized and feature-rich service management platform that helps companies streamline their processes and operate more efficiently. To learn more about these innovative technologies, please visit their website at servicetitan.com. Before we start the presentation, I would like everyone to know that this session is being recorded and that all attendee microphones will be muted. This particular webinar is worth one CEU. By navigating to the certification tab on the IA's website and locating the submit CEUs option, you can easily record your credits earned. For those of you that are unfamiliar with our web address, it is irrigation.org. If you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A section of the Zoom interface. The presenters will do their best to answer them before the webinar ends. Now I'd like to introduce you to our two presenters for today, Vanessa Hathaway and Jamie Hoffer. Vanessa has been showcasing Service Titan to customers in all trades for over two and a half years and has enabled hundreds of companies to change their lives and their businesses on the platform. Jamie joined Service Titan in 2015, and in that time has watched Service Titan expand from a residential service-focused software to a software built for all trades, residential, commercial, service, and construction. She's held multiple customer-centric roles in sales, operations, and customer success, and still believes that after all these years, Service Titan changes lives. Without further ado, I'll give these experts the floor. Take it away, guys. Hello, everybody. I'm so pleased to be speaking with you guys today. I know Jamie is as well. The first thing that I would like to do is just set an agenda so that everybody understands how we're going to be spending our time together today, and then we'll get into it. So I think a good place for us to start is doing some introductions, um, Jamie and myself, and then we're gonna talk about the promos that we have going on for everyone that is attending this webinar today. If you guys do want to set up a personalized demo, we can also handle that after this demo is over. Um, and then after we go through all of our introductions, talk to you about who Service Titan is, if you've never heard of us before, um, you definitely will leave knowing exactly who we are today. And we're actually gonna jump into the live software. So unlike going to our website and taking a look at all the resources that are there, you're actually gonna get a sneak peek into that software and see the workflow from start to finish, both office and mobile side. And then we'll take a pause and talk about um, any questions that anybody has, we have a Q&A section. So we'll allow you guys to actually ask your questions and Jamie and I will do our best to answer those. So first, I'll tell you guys a little bit about myself. Um, as Robert said, I have been with the company for over two and a half years, nearly three at this point. Um, I have a background in consulting small businesses on how to lower their costs in their business. So that's where I started in my career. I've personally helped and consulted over 160 unique shops here at Service Titan, who eventually decided to make the switch over to Service Titan. Um, and my specific focus here has been with new markets. So um, one of the new markets in particular being irrigation and landscaping. Um, Jamie, I'll pass it over to you. Hello, everyone. Thanks for the introductions. Um, as Robert and Vanessa said, I am a, a very long tenured employee at Service Titan here going on seven years. Um, it's been truly amazing to go from a couple hundred customers back in 2015 to now thousands. Um, but I think more impressive and it's most pertinent to the audience today is just seeing how much the software itself has grown, not to be 
just a, a kind of a stable and accessible software, but just the suite of features and how you know uh, limber they are in the way that they can service different trades. Um, so it's just been a really fun ride to kind of watch that expand and grow. Um, on the screen, I think it's worth a shout out. That's my little puppy, Rita. She's five pounds, which is the exact opposite of Vanessa's dog, who's like 200 pounds. We like our dogs here around Service Titan. Um, but uh, that's a little bit about how uh, who I am. As Vanessa mentioned, we're gonna give some more information on how to register for a webinar um, a little bit later in this presentation, but I didn't wanna bury the lead and uh, go ahead and let you guys know what some of the promotions are that are gonna be available for folks that are not only attending this webinar, you need to hit the next one for me and come back to that one. Thank you. Um, just to let you guys know, if you want to schedule a proper personalized demo, you will receive a lot of different information that's more tailored to you if you do so. And you end up registering for Service Titan and decide to kind of move your company over. You'll be el eligible for 50% uh, off your first six months. So not an insignificant savings there. And it's a great way to kind of hit the ground running. Um, kind of a special raffle for those specifically attending uh, this webinar as well. Automatically, if you sit for a demo, you'll be entered into a special bucket for a raffle for a Yeti Tundra, my personal favorite Yeti size because it rolls. It can roll it on down to the beach. You guys can choose your color. We'll hook you up with that, send it to whoever you want. Uh, so just a little special bonus and thank you for sitting with us. Uh, before I kick it back to Vanessa, I wanted to, to give a special shout out to just our partnership in general with IA. I cannot believe it's been two years, as I remember when we were getting this partnership off the ground with them. Um, and it, they've just been really instrumental in our ability to feel like we can go confidently into the trades of irrigation and, and landscaping and some of their sister uh, trades because they've been so uh, informational and in just what we need to do with the product and how we've iterated the product over the last few years. So a special thank you to, to not only Robert and some of his cohorts, but you guys, the, the customers that have jumped on board because uh, the software certainly would not be in its current standing without some of the feedback we've gotten. So definitely an appreciation and we're excited to kind of show you, especially for those uh, new eyeballs that haven't seen Service Titan, what it is exactly we do a little differently from everybody else. And with that, I'll kick it back over to Vanessa. Yep, thanks, Jamie. And I know I kind of skipped over to this slide a little prematurely, but um, if you guys are wondering who Service Titan is and what we do, I'll just keep it very simple. We streamline everything from reporting in your business all the way to the dispatching and scheduling and everything in between. And we are considered the number one software in field service management. We're super familiar with all the other ones out there, and we're excited to show you how we're different from those. So without further ado, I wanted to also show you guys um, just a quick sneak peek of just a few examples of some of the customers that we serve today. So we currently are uh, partnered with over 10,000 customers, um, you know, contractors in the industry in a variety of different industries, including irrigation today. And those customers range anywhere from having three technicians in their shop to hundreds of technicians. So I think that that's a really important thing to note because we're not just there to support the smaller business needs or the really large business needs, but we're also there to support the journey along the way um, if, your, if growth is your goal. A couple of the main reasons why folks tend to partner with Service Titan. Um, these are the four what I like to call pillars of why sh shops tend to partner with us. So the first one there at the top is our ability to increase uh, revenue and improve on your margins. And all of these will be prevalent themes as we go through the demo today. So I'll actually show you how we can do that. Automations and efficiency, that's the second one down. So um, think about all of the little things that may take up more time in your daily you know, roles, whether that be someone in the field that's filling out a form, somebody in the office that's bogged down with paperwork, we want to streamline those inefficiencies for you and give you that time back in your day. Amazing customer experience. Customers today expect a very high detailed and white glove experience. And we want you guys to be able to deliver on what they want, need, and expect. And then the last one is visibility or accountability and control. So think about how we can create these 
gated workflows, as I like to call them, so that we make sure everyone is doing things by the books. A perfect example of what I'm referring to here that I like to always illustrate is um, when a technician has to fill out a form in the field, for example, maybe you're having a hard time getting them to actually fill those forms out or answer the right questions and collect that data that's really critical to your business. We can actually trigger forms and make them required so that they cannot close out a job and move on to the next one until they do those necessary actions. That's just one example of many. Now, this is very generic, but some of the main reasons why irrigation shops specifically tend to partner with us are, um, are illustrated here on the screen. So when it comes to increasing revenue, specifically reoccurring revenue, so customers that are part of your maintenance programs. The next one is increasing efficiency, more specifically, squeezing in those extra jobs per day so that you guys are running more jobs every week, every month. And then increasing customer retention. So we wanna help you guys make sure that those customers are renewing their contracts. And then the last one is pretty straightforward, collecting cash and speeding up that cash flow. Um, so with that said, I'm actually going to go ahead and jump into this software right now. And what I want to do, guys, is I actually want to show you what it looks like when a job is flowing through Service Titan from start to finish. So that said, I'll actually begin by showing you the office side. But keep in mind, there are two sides to Service Titan. You've got your office side, and then you have your mobile app. So both of them communicate in real time with each other. That's an important thing to keep in mind. Also, the software is cloud-based, so you can access this from absolutely anywhere. You know, if the goal is early retirement or you just want to be, you know, hands out of the business and working on the business instead, um, then this is, you know, if you're not on a cloud based software, I don't know what you're doing today, but we want to get you in that direction. So the very first landing page that you guys will see when you log into your account is going to be a dashboard similar to this one. <clears throat> I'll give you a quick tour of this, and then we're actually ultimately going to jump into that call tab at the top there and start booking a job. But first, when you open your account and you see the dashboard, one really important thing that we are going to help you guys set up during implementation is something called business units. So think about the different divisions that you guys have in your companies. You may have an installation division, a maintenance division, a service division. Maybe you do more than just irrigation. Maybe you do construction and you do residential and commercial. We can set this up so that it's specific to your company. That way you have better granular reporting on those various profit centers. On the left side, we have a date range. So this is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna pull in some more data here. And we're gonna show you a lot of just, you know, KPIs and metrics that are showing you the overall health of the company. So company metrics like total sales, average ticket. If you guys do marketing, we can show you how many of your calls are actually converting into booked jobs and selling. We're going to organize a technician scorecard to show you technician performance, ranging from productivity to sales. We have a section that shows you office metrics. For example, um, how many calls are coming in and how many of those are qualified leads that are booking into jobs, if you'd like to monitor that type of metric. Just under that, there is a marketing scorecard. Anyone that's doing advertising um, needs a better way of tracking how much revenue is actually associated to those various ads that they're running. For example, if you're running a Facebook ad, you may ask the question, hey, how did you hear about us in order to you know, figure out that they called you from Facebook? What we can do is actually automate that entire process for you, which would eliminate human error of maybe the customer forgetting uh, where they found you. Also, perhaps your scheduler forgets to ask the question. So ultimately, we can actually show you how much ad or how much revenue is being generated from each individual ad 
Um, and we can get into the intricacies of how this works if you set up a personalized demo. But just know, in the future, you guys would never have to guess, you know, which marketing campaigns are working versus which ones should we move on from. So all of that is really icing on top of the cake. What I want to get into now is our call screen. This is ultimately where you guys are going to be booking your jobs from. So I'll go through a quick example where I call in and actually uh, book a job off of an existing customer. Before that though, I wanna point out, we have several different ways that you can book a job from this screen. And the idea here is consolidation. We want it to be really easy to find those incoming leads and have everything living under one roof. So the chat tab, this enables your landline or a separate textable line to be textable. So any customer can send you text, they can send you pictures and videos, and you can actually book a job right off of a text message after having that correspondence here. The next tab is bookings. Ultimately, these are just leads, they're coming from your website. <clears throat> Think about that form that's on your contact us page. We can essentially replace that with our form and those leads would come directly into here for review. So we can see the review, the summary or the request that the customer sent, the day and time that they sent, and we can either get in touch with them easily from here to figure out a better day and time that may suit your schedule. Or if this request works out, we can go ahead and book the job right off of that. And that leads me into the last and more than likely most common way of booking a job, which is through an inbound phone call. So what I'm going to do here is actually take my cell phone and I'm going to call in as if I'm a customer. Now, before I do this, I want to explain what's going to happen. We integrate with your phone systems at the carrier level. All that means is we're not gonna touch or change your hardware if you guys have a voice over IP system, a landline, or even a business cell phone, you're gonna stay stick with what you have today. We're just basically going to forward those calls through your Service Titan screen, kind of like a supercharged caller ID where it pops up that customer's profile at your fingertips just from calling in. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now. Okay, so I'm sure everyone's looking at that green bubble that just popped up. That's because I'm calling in, right? Because I'm an existing customer, my name is Rob today, I can see that profile popping up here. So if you guys have a customer that has more than one location, I do think it's important to call out. All of those locations would be listed beneath Rob. So you do have the ability to tie several properties to a single point of contact. Now, let's take a step back. Let's just say this was not an existing customer. You would just create the new customer. You'd see the number that's dialing in with no name. Create a new customer. And here you can indicate where will the service be performed and who's going to be paying for the job. So if you have a lot of tenants that you're actually billing a landlord for, or maybe you do property management work, you can actually indicate we may be billing somebody else besides the individual that lives at this property. You can also see there, if you do commercial work, you can indicate this is a commercial property versus residential. Now, once we select that location that the customer is calling about, the very first thing Service Titan is going to let you know is that they have an outstanding balance. We wanna make sure you can collect that before you proceed and book any more work with this customer. And then I'll give you a quick tour of what a location record looks like. There's a ton of information on this screen. And I do wanna just mention that during implementation, we're gonna be bringing a lot of this information over so that you guys are not starting from a blank slate, but you can take advantage of features like this from day one. So at the top there, I have tags. Think about those as digital post-it notes you can create on a customer's account or profile. 
Underneath that, we have notes, really important things like gate codes, parking instructions, I have noted here and pinned to the top so that they're floating above any not as important notes. We also have a custom form builder in Service Titan. I'll demonstrate this a bit more on the mobile side, but if you guys have checklists that the technicians need to fill out from the field, that can be built out um, and set up in Service Titan. A couple of other important things I'll call out, memberships. A membership is simply a service agreement. So if you have uh, reoccurring service agreements that your customer is a part of, such as winterization, startup, mid-season check-ins, maybe you do lawn care, any of those reoccurring events, we would organize on that customer's location through what we call a membership so that you know what they have, you know, what's included and the duration of that. Jobs is another important section here. We can take a look at all previous service history at one quick glance. If a customer has a quick question about something, you can even link directly into that job. This will show you how much they paid for it, the estimates that you presented, which one sold, which technician of yours went out there, how long they drove, worked, any photos or videos that were taken on site, and even an audit trail that outlines every single action that was done to this job, whether that be someone in the field or in the office making a change. Okay, last couple of things I'll point out on this record are towards the bottom. So another important section for irrigation shops is equipment. If you have timers, controllers, anything that is on the property that maybe your technicians are going out there and they're not really sure where it's located, and they're wasting a lot of time looking for that equipment, we can help you guys track that equipment here. Even manufacturer, model, serial numbers, and warranty details. The last section is that reoccurring service and events that they're a part of. So this is all related back to that membership or maintenance program that they're a part of. That way you can see which reoccurring services they get. In this case, I have a winterization and a startup. And then at the very bottom, those are just the dates that those events are due. So let's go ahead and book a job here. And I'm gonna base this off of the scenario where Rob called us to let us know that he has a couple of sprinkler heads broken. So the job type list here is what we're gonna use to find that type of job. This would be a custom list. And as soon as I select sprinkler repair, it's prompting my scheduler to ask these specific questions. What type of system is it? How was it damaged? Any notes for the technician to see would go down below. We'll automatically suggest the correct business unit. This is service. Now, when we go to get our availability, I'm gonna show you two of the most common ways to do that in Service Titan. The first way is looking at your schedule tab at the top. This is going to be a very similar view to Google Calendar. So here you can take a look at your month, your week, and your three-day view. You can also apply filters to this view to get your availability and narrow this down. So for example, if you guys have a specific technician you're looking to assign this to, we can look at their schedule. Another really cool feature is zones. And this is very different from an irrigation zone. This is a zone that you guys can create in your Service Titan account. So think about a group of cities or zip codes that you give a name and a color. If you service a large area in particular, this is really helpful. So when you come to schedule, you're going to filter down to the zone that that customer Rob lives in. And that way you can go ahead and schedule him on a day and time that you're already gonna be in that area. And in a real life scenario, the way this would work is right on this location record, you'll notice that I actually have it indicated what zone this customer lives in. Um,
well, we can skip past that for now, but I think you guys get the idea there. So the next thing that I wanna show you and the other way you can get your availability is using the schedule assistant. Now, this is a really great feature if you just want Service Titan to tell you when to book this job. Based on the parameters that you set, you can indicate even um, just to show technicians with the skill sets to do the job and a few other toggles that you can turn on. Ultimately, Service Titan is going to look through your schedule and let you know the best day, time, and technician to do this based on efficiency. So this is telling me I need to book this with Edson between 4.30 and 5.30 today, and it's only going to add three minutes to his current route. So this is just one of many ways we can help you guys squeeze those extra jobs in per day. Now I want to assign this to a helper as well. And let's go ahead and book the job. The next thing I wanna point out is our dispatch board. This is the single handedly most um, helpful view for a single day because you can see all of the jobs that are scheduled for the day. All of your technicians are on the left side. Timeline is across the top. And the cool thing about this is all of these jobs are color coded by status. So you never have to check in physically with a technician and ask, Hey, how are you progressing with this job? By the colors on the board, you can know if a job is scheduled, which is light blue. When a customer confirms an appointment, which I'll get to in a little bit, it turns dark blue. When a technician starts driving and he's on the way, it will be purple. And when they've arrived and started working, it's green. The last color there would be gray, indicating they've completed the job. Now this is a totally dynamic board in the sense that these jobs can be dragged and dropped. You can slide the bars to be longer or shorter to take up more or less of the schedule. You can change technicians by dragging and dropping. You can also choose to make any changes by right clicking. You can even reschedule directly from here. So any change that you would need to make to a job, you can do directly off of the dispatch board. Now on the right side, you'll notice I have a couple of logs of updates. So this is a live feed of what's going on for the day. I can see when a tech has arrived, started driving, when they finish a job, I can also communicate with them from here by viewing that chat history. So this would be communication back and forth between technician and the office. The way you initiate that is by simply clicking into their name on the left. Now at the very bottom, we also have a GPS board. So our GPS is at the mobile app level that they're gonna download for Service Titan. This way you can actually see where everybody is located and where the jobs are for the day. Okay, so this is typically a good stopping point for me to go ahead and switch into the mobile app. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop into that. And I'll actually be using my iPad today. So I may be looking down quite a bit here. Okay. Um, and I'll ask this question to Jamie since I can see her. Jamie, can you see the screen? It should say Rob Maxwell. Just give me a thumbs up. I can indeed. Perfect. All right. So this is the mobile app that we're looking at now, guys. Um, I'll just point out a couple of really important things about this before we get into the workflow. So the mobile app works with both Android and iOS devices, so Apple or Android. It does work with phones, but we do recommend tablets as the view is just simply larger and it's a better user experience. The other thing that I want you to keep in mind is this does have offline mode. So if the guys get into an area without connectivity, it'll automatically switch 
That way they can still go about their day and make updates and changes. That'll just cache in the background and upload once they have connection again. Another really important thing is a lot of this is permission driven. So you can control what your technician sees and what they cannot see. So keep that in mind as you may see something that you don't want your technicians to have access here. It's probably just a permission setting that could be turned off. So the first thing we're gonna do is clock in for the day. And yes, we do the timesheets. So we're gonna not only let them clock in and out for the day, but also track their time for each individual um, job. So the first one there is clock in and then they'll clock out. Um, if you guys allow them to book their own jobs, we do have a section down at the bottom. Uh, you know, maybe they're on call for the weekend or something like that. The very first thing that they'll see is the dashboard, and this is going to show them that first job they have for the day. We'll get into that later, but just underneath that, they're going to see a scorecard. This is a perfect example of a permission setting, but think about uh, motivating your salespeople, right? If they're selling in the field, you want them to be able to take a look at their close rate, their conversion rate, their total sales. This is a really handy feature to motivate them. Back at the top across these tabs, the next tab is all jobs. This is simply where they're gonna see their full schedule. And again, you've got tons of permission settings here. You can scale back how many jobs they see at a time. The content portal is another feature. This is just a great place to put training materials, documents, things of that nature that they need to access in between jobs. Follow-up tab would be more so sales related. Um, if you want your technicians or salespeople to stay on top of any open estimates, that way they are they're actually remembering to call and follow up. They can find those open estimates here, log follow-up activities and set reminders. The last tab is history. This would just pre be previous jobs that have already been closed out. But let's go ahead and jump back into our overview so we can start working on this job. So think about this as the job folder. The first couple of things we're gonna see are the type of job. So sprinkler repair, any notes that were taken from the office. We can get turn by turn directions. This will link to Google Maps. On the right side, these are quick links, I like to call them. So any really important details they should be checking before they get started, like pinned notes. If they call you guys asking questions left and right, like what's the gate code? Where is such and such located? Does this customer have a dog? What's the arrival procedure? This is a great place to put those really important details so that they don't have to call and ask those questions. And then at the bottom, we can see any custom tags that you guys have put on this location, customer, or the job. If you allow your customers to receive calls from your technician, they can call that customer from here. We do have call masking, which allows us to make it look like your office is calling instead of that text personal cell phone. Now, when they're actually getting started, they're going to click on uh, where it says arrive, it would have initially said dispatch. However, I've already done that from the office just to get that purple color showing up for us. But we're going to go ahead and arrive. This will actually automatically happen through geofencing. If you're not familiar with what that term is, whenever you're using something like Google Maps or Apple Maps and you get where you're going, it auto arrives you. That's geofencing. So we do the same thing here. Now, this is a perfect example of when we can trigger a form that needs to be filled out. So again, if you have those checklists that the technician need to fill out, we can trigger those, even make them required if need be. As a general rule of thumb, technicians work from top to bottom on those left tabs. History, that's the next one down. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's previous service history. So today, if you're using um, paper, 
especially, <laughs> and you're providing them with details via printing it off or them calling you asking questions, this will eliminate the need to um, print paper or have those phone calls from the field. This is gonna show them all existing history on this location. So we can take a look at equipment that lives on the property, photos and videos, previous jobs that had been completed, who did what, when and where, and a lot more there. But I'm gonna go ahead and move on down to forms. So I already touched on forms briefly, but let's pop into one of these just to check it out. Let's take a look at this irrigation checkup list. So this is just a custom form that you guys can create an example of what you can create in Service Titan. The alternative is you can also import a fillable PDF. So you can use our, for, our native form builder or a fillable PDF. This is just an example, but there are a variety of different types of fields, check boxes, pick menus, drop down lists, signature pads. I could keep going on and on about these forms. Now the next section is estimates. This is where Service Titan drives the majority of the value from the mobile app and how we can help you guys increase your sales, also convert customers over to your membership or maintenance program. So I'll go through a quick example here. By clicking add estimate, I have two options. I can either build one from scratch or I can grab from a template. A template is something you guys can set up from the office side. That way the technician or salesperson has something to work off of every time. So these are a fantastic example for common scenarios. Um, let's just say we're doing a sprinkler redesign. I've got this template that I can work off of. If I select it, I can actually jump in there and make edits to that estimate by removing or replacing items, also by adding new items there with this button. Now, instead of doing that, I'm actually going to build an estimate from scratch by selecting build new option. Let's call this required repairs. Once your tech or salesperson clicks add items, it's going to link them into your price book. So I wanna emphasize, this is just my price book. It's just an example, but when we get you started, we're going to import your price book and you can have it organized similar to the way that I've got mine set up through categories. I have a cover page just to make it easy for them to navigate. And let's just say we're looking at our irrigation category and we wanna find a specific type of sprinkler head or nozzle. I can actually just start keyword searching and it'll narrow down those categories for me. So let's go ahead and select that first one. And maybe the customer needs 15 new heads. We can go ahead and add that to an estimate. Now, this is a flat rate example, but I do wanna be clear, we can accommodate time and material as well. Now, we've gone ahead and built that estimate. We can make one of these recommended. And when you present this to your customer, it would look something like this. We're going to make that recommended option the larger one, if you're doing a good, better, best, meaning showing multiple options. Now, when the customer clicks to view it, they can see what's included, but something I wanna call out at the top there is that little box that says savings. Now, this is actually indicating that this customer is a part of our service agreement already, and this is the savings that they get to take advantage of because they're a part of our service agreement. However, if this customer was not a part of your service agreement, it would say potential savings, which helps spark that conversation about um, signing up for your service agreement and having that customer uh, get the winterization startup mid-season done by your company, which can really help improve that retention. But let's go ahead and sign and accept this estimate.
And the next step here is indicating when will the work be performed? So this really would depend on who is selling the estimate. If let's say you have a consultant that's going out and they're just simply providing a quote, but they're not performing the work, they're going to select no, the work will be done later. If this is a technician on site performing the work, they're either going to select, yes, I have the items to do the work and they're gonna go ahead and just perform that work or yes, but I need to get the items to do the work. So yes, they're gonna do the work today, but maybe they need to run to the supply house or grab something from your warehouse first. Let's go ahead and just select yes. And automatically this brings your tech or salesperson to the invoice. So we can see the items that were sold we can also see what we call a closeout list. So any other action items that are required of that tech before they move on is going to be indicated here. Taking payment, we allow you to swipe cards, um, take photos of checks and auto deposit that way, or even store payment method on file. And then signatures, if you, do require signatures to be collected before moving on. We can also help with streamlining that. Any other workflow uh, requirements that are necessary at this time would be indicated here. But lastly, I'll show you the technicians can also take photos and videos. And they can also take notes and indicate what that note is about. Is it about the job, customer, or location? But let's go ahead and close this out. And we're going to go ahead and complete the job. I do wanna point out these two advanced options quickly. Pause the appointment would be used if they're gonna step away momentarily and come back the same day. I need another appointment would be used if some other action needs to take place before we can complete the work, such as let's say a technician was out there, he thought he could do the work today, but we actually need a part that we need to get ordered before we can perform the install. You can have a custom list here that they can select from, waiting on materials. And let's go ahead and close this out. Just to tie up loose ends here, I wanna show you where that job would appear back on the office side. And then we're gonna jump into the invoice quickly. So back to our office side, once we put that job on hold and indicated that we're waiting for materials, it's going to appear in this hold status. This will organize all of those jobs with action items that need to get taken care of before we can finish the job. That way they're not slipping through the cracks. We can now see that this job has been completed because it's gray. If we click into that, you'll see all of those changes that were made, which estimates were presented, sold, timesheets, photos and videos that were taken, and an audit trail. This will also link you guys directly into that invoice where changes can be made. If your technician's not emailing the invoice from the field and you'd like to have a set of eyes on that beforehand, this is where you'll go. We can take a look at any items added, make edits, add new items. We can see that job costing automatically done for us, taking into account everything from performance pay to materials used and even more. And you can go ahead and email those invoices out from here. Finally, I want to point out the accounting tab. This is where we can take a look at AR management and all invoices and payments for that uh, period of time, such as you know the day. Ultimately, we do quick we do have a QuickBooks sync, so all of this data would get pushed over to QuickBooks typically once a day. Um, there is a lot more that we could go through, but I do want to do a quick time check, um, make sure I'm doing okay on time. Um, so I'll, I guess, chime in Jamie or Robert. You have about 15 minutes, Vanessa. Perfect. Okay. So there are a couple of other things I want to show you guys here that I skipped past. 
Um, back on our dispatch board, you're probably wondering, what does it look like when I have a lot of reoccurring services and how do I optimize my technician's routes? So we could of course get into way more depth on this on a personalized demo. So I won't exactly pop into my settings and show you how to apply a membership to a customer. But what I will do is I'm gonna show you where all of those reoccurring service events live after you have that membership on the customer. So we have what we call the follow-up tab. This is going to organize all of those reoccurring service events. Let's just say we wanna go ahead and pre-schedule out all of our upcoming events for the month of September. We can go ahead and apply that date range and we can take a look at all of our customers that have upcoming events due. If we went ahead and selected all of these, you can actually bulk book them. Now there is some work that goes into this in the background during implementation so that we can get it right, such as setting preferred technicians. You can also create routes um, as tags. So let's just say you've got your Monday route, for example. But for now, I'm just gonna do a bulk schedule. I can select all, hit book, and I can leave that date blank so that it just selects the date that was preset in the membership. Similar with technicians, if you had a preferred technician, and you can choose to send this with or without a booking confirmation. I'll explain that in a little bit. Once you go ahead and book those, Ultimately, these are just going to book on the background and appear on your schedule later. Now, I'm not actually going to book all 1,000 of these, so I'm going to just select a, a few. Let's do these four. I'm going to make sure that those are today. And let's go back to our dispatch board and you'll see those populating on the schedule. All right, so we can see a couple of jobs that were just thrown on the schedule there. For this example, I'm gonna move some of these around and I wanna show you guys how you can optimize the technician's route so that they're going in the best order. So let's use Arc Technician Edson here, for example. He has four different jobs. If I click into his name, you can view the technician route. That would be step number one. So we can take a look at which order he would be going in those uh, to those different jobs. This looks a little wonky, so maybe we wanna go ahead and optimize that, make sure that we're making him most efficient. So right there, we can see optimize technician route. If I select that, it'll actually rearrange the jobs in the most optimal order, taking into account driving time as well. And as you can see there, some of those just switched place and you've got that purple line that's indicating the drive time. So this will really help you guys squeeze those extra jobs in per day and make sure that you're minimizing driving time because we all know that gas is severely overpriced right now. Let's see, last thing I wanna point out to you guys, which I should have shown you earlier, is there are a couple of different customer notifications. So when we talk customer notifications, I'm gonna pull those up in the background. These can be customized. They can also be um, customized in the sense that you don't have to send them for every single type of job. You can choose the types of jobs that receive these notifications. Um, for example, if you're doing a winterization, your customer may not need these notifications, or let's say maybe you do um, some type of weekly service where they don't wanna get blown up with a bunch of notifications, you can turn it off at that level. You can also turn these off for specific customers. So the first one here is the booking confirmation. That's pretty straightforward. It goes out when we were on that call screen and we hit book job. The next one is the reminder. 
So similar to a notification you may get from your dentist or your doctor, this will go out as soon as, or actually this will go out the day prior. So either 24 hours before or a set time the day before. If they did respond to confirm the appointment, it's going to turn that job to a darker blue color, which I showed you earlier on the dispatch board. The third one is dispatch notification. The time at which this one is sent is when your technician is actually on their mobile app, clicking on dispatch, indicating that they're driving there. So similar to a notification you may get from Uber or Lyft, it'll show who's on the way. And you even have a tracking link here. So the customer can take a look at where that technician is so that they're not calling your office staff asking. Lastly, we have the job completion survey. This is pretty much what it sounds like. It's a great way for you guys to have better control over what that customer sentiment looks like and who is actually leaving reviews publicly online because you can monitor this first. So this is an internal feedback tool so that you know, one, did we do a really poor job or did they respond five for excellent? Of course, you can change that range, but then you can actually choose which customers you're following up with, asking to leave reviews online, or maybe mitigating a situation to make it better. I believe that is everything that I had to show you guys today. So I really appreciate you letting me go through that, and I hope everyone was tracking well. I do wanna make sure that we spend some time for Q&A and set that aside. I do wanna just close this out by saying, there is so much more that I could have gone through in Service Titan. I also tend to customize the demo to the shop that I'm speaking to. I understand some of you may be residential, some of you may be more emphasis on commercial work. Also, some may have construction and larger installation projects that you work on rather than a service, you know, service side of the business being the bigger focus. So that said, if you guys are interested in a demo, um, I can personalize this to your, your company and talk more about your specific goals. Uh, but without further ado, we'll kind of open it up to, to Q&A. Uh, Robert, I don't know if you had anything to add there or should we just open it up for questions? Uh, nothing to add at the moment. We do have five minutes for questions, guys, so please don't be shy. I'll give us about a minute to add those into the Q&A section of the chat. All right. Sounds good. Don't be shy is right. Yeah, please ask questions, guys. There is no silly question. I do see a hand up. I'm not sure how long that's been up. If you have your hand up, please make sure to type your question or your query into the chat box, please. Thank you. Or the Q&A, rather. So we have one from our friend David Eddy. He asks, is Aspire software going to turn into this program? I can take that one. Currently, there are no plans to mold both Aspire and Service Titan together. They are standalone products for now and probably for the foreseeable future. Aspire is going to be zoned out specifically for more of the kind of re heavy recurring services style landscaping companies. So that's going to be very different from more of the service focused, uh, repair focused, even longer project construction focused style irrigation and landscaping type work. So it's really going to come down to what your business focus is, which program is going to better suit your day-to-day -day needs, but they will remain separate. And for those of you who don't know, Aspire is now a Service Titan company. It lives under the umbrella of Service Titan software. Uh, that was an acquisition made um, in less than 12 months ago, but the plan is to keep Aspire software as is. Very good to know, Jamie. Thank you. Next up, we have our friend, Mary Sears. She asks, what is the number of customers this software can handle? Uh, just for clarification, meaning 
you as a business owner, is there a limit to the amount of data or customers that you'll be able to manage within the software? Just want to make sure I'm understanding correctly. Mary, please type in your response if you can. Jamie, I think we'll assume that's what she means. Oh, yes. Wondering size of database. Oh, okay. Yeah. The beauty of cloud-based software, the limit does not exist. There is no limit to what um, data you can put in, and that includes customer records, <coughs> um, excuse me, photos, videos. Um, th there is no limit. We will never cap you on that. And uh, for kind of comparison purposes, you know, some of our customers run upwards of four, five, six hundred trucks. You can imagine the number of customers and data they're handling within the platform. Um, and there is no limit to that. So um, you'll, you'll never run out of uh, room to run there. Thank you, Mary, for submitting that question. Thank you, Jamie, for answering. We have about a two minute. We have about two minutes for more questions. Yeah, we can certainly get into the specifics of pricing. I see Mary's question there around the pricing structure for how Service Titan approaches that. You're spot on that it is a, a price per user. Which users do have a price tag associated with it does come down to more of an individualized basis. Usually it is going to be those folks running individually in the field um, versus any back office folks who are always free on Service Titan. Um, so if you scheduled specific time with the demo, either using that link on the screen or uh, messaging myself or Vanessa after this, we can certainly go into the details of what that pricing would look like for your individual company. But yes, it is mostly revolving around price per um, field users, but that price varies wildly depending on use case. Very good. I think we have time for one more uh, from our friend Eduardo. Is it possible to manage service alerts from the controllers like water flow, leakage, and so on? Is it possible to manage service alerts from the controllers like water flow, leakage, and so on? I think this is more so referring to the actual controller system that you're installing at the property or managing at the property. Um, to my knowledge, there would not be a way to monitor um, that remotely through the actual software itself. But I, I do want to say that I, I think we would need a bit more specifics, maybe have a conversation around what exactly um, you're asking here just to make sure that we're appropriately answering that. Absolutely, Eduardo. And, and definitely email education at irrigation.org with that question and we'll follow up with you. Definitely. All right, everyone, it looks like we are out of time. Thank you for attending and please don't forget to check out our website for upcoming webinars throughout the year. A big thanks to Vanessa and Jamie for sharing their knowledge with us today and to Service Titan for sponsoring the webinar. Like I said, if you have any questions that we did not answer, please feel free to email them at education at irrigation.org and we'll pass them on to the appropriate team member. This concludes our webinar. Have a nice day, everyone. Thanks, Thanks guys.